Drake is easily one of the most popular singers in the world. He had an unbelievable amount of number one songs, hit albums, music tours, Grammys, and so much more. And all of his fame has allowed him to have a net worth of a hundred million dollars. All that money means that he has a lot of expensive things and not all of them are what you expect. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything from King Trending. Number six, handbags for his future wife. What's highly desirable is the Porosis Crocodile. Let's talk about class for a bit, okay? Class is knowing how to handle a situation in a good yet refined way. More so, it's handling the situation in the right way, such as Drake in regards to his future wife. Now, there's been many nasty rumors about Drake and how he had many women and possibly a minor, but Drake denies these claims. And as if to prove this, he's already stocking on purses for his future wife just to make sure that when they meet, she won't have to spend a dime on them. Don't believe me? He confessed during this interview with Hollywood Reporter, noting there's very few things in this world, tangible things anyway, that hold their value and sort of appreciate as the years go on. So it was one of those things that I started collecting as well for the woman I ended up with one day. A few things in this world that, uh, tangible things anyway, that hold their value. So I have a fairly vast collection of Hermes to offer somebody at some point in life. By Hermes, he means Hermes Birkin, a very extravagant and very expensive handbag line. In fact, the reason that people are getting these is because the items themselves can only be afforded by those who have money. The minimum price of one of these handbags is $11,000, and they can go as high as $300,000. And notice, in his section, he says he's got a collection of these items saved up for his future wife, which could well and truly mean that he spent millions and millions of dollars on a purse collection just so that he can hope that his future potential wife will be happy with them once she sees them forget about going the distance or even the extra mile this is class first class class even he's making sure that his future wife is taken care of from the word go and it's hard to fault him for that i mean let's be honest if you can get your future wife such things before even getting married and offer them as a gift wouldn't you yeah that's what i thought again class Number five, Hidden Hills Mansion. Uh, away from home, I used to ball still, but. Oh, Being a guy of his standing, it's totally understandable that Drake moves around a lot. I mean, he goes and lives in Toronto most of the time that he can manage it, but when he needs to get away from it all, you know that he has multiple houses that he can go to. He had one in Miami for a while and then decided to give it up and then go to a place called the Hidden Hills. It's in California, it's located outside of Los Angeles, but what sets it apart is that he calls it his bachelor pad, which you can still say since he's still single. But what might be the most important thing about this house is that it's within a gated community. This is important for many reasons, not the least of which is that the gated community ensures them privacy, and you might think that celebrities enjoy being in the spotlight all the time, as it's their job to an extent, but in truth, it's never that simple. Sometimes these celebrities just try and have a fun regular life, or go out on the town with friends to live up life. And if they're hounded by the paparazzi and other media, it can weigh on a person who just wants to be by themselves. This actually makes this lavish mansion all the more important to a guy like Drake. He spent $7.5 million on it, and that has granted him all sorts of privacy, but also fun to be had to those he actually wants at his home. He has six bedrooms for them to relax in, and when he needs to take them around town, as it's next to Los Angeles, he has an army of cars waiting for them. Drake knows how to live big, while also honoring the more personal nature of things. Number four, parties. All right, I know it's impossible to own a party. But let's be frank here. When you're hosting a party or you go to a party and you spend more money than anyone else around, you own that party. And Drake most definitely knows how to party. Let's start off with the basics. He has fans and friends that he likes to hang out with. So if he wanted to throw a party, he would go all out to make sure that they all had a good time. I'm talking DJs, great beverages, food galore, games, live performances, if he wanted. The sky's the limit when it comes to things like this. And even if he's not throwing his own party, which is his right, obviously that doesn't mean he can go and indulge with someone else at their party. Drake honestly has a bit of a reputation of going to nightclubs and crashing parties and then showing up everyone in a big way. One such occasion was when he was in Oklahoma City in 2002. After doing a show, he went and found a nightclub to go hang out at with his entourage. After living it up, the police were actually called in and they forced the club to shut down. Not cool, 
but very drank. Reportedly, the real reason for the shutdown wasn't the loudness or even the number of people there. It was because there were illegal substances reported, and Drake was apparently one of the people partaking in that. Either way, his party got the club shut down, and the owner actually asked for compensation from Drake to cover his losses. If he felt generous, I'm sure the payout was rather lovely. So even his payouts are expensive. Just goes to show, when you have the money to live it up, you will find the ways to live it up. Number three, child support. The photo of the finger painting Adonis greater than Picasso don't at me. There has been a lot of rumors over the last year or so to whether Drake had a kid. It was rumored to be true, but then Drake denied it for some time. Then in June 2018, he admitted he did have a son named Adonis Graham. And while the future of Drake and his son is still up in the air for various reasons, not the least of which is because he's not married to the child's mother, you can bet for as long as he's able to, he will provide for his child. A lot of this is due to a very rough childhood that Drake had while growing up. His parents divorced while he was very young, and this led to all sorts of problems for Drake growing up. Not the least of which was though he visited his father, he didn't appreciate him because of the pain that he put his mother through. Ironically though, he did pick up his dad's career as his father was a musician, able at one who never had the fame of his son, and still doesn't despite the connection. And that has allotted him the money he needs to take care of himself and now his kid Adonis, as well as the baby's mother, Sophie Brussex. He no doubt didn't want them to suffer like the way he did in many ways. Funnily enough, off his start to fame, the TV show Degrassi only happened because of his mother being sick, and the two were in desperate need of money to keep on surviving. Drake is an honorable man, and would make sure that his kid never has to be forced to make that choice, but rather that he and any future kids could be supported as well as possible so that they can live their lives free. He's also likely going to make sure that Adonis, and again, possibly future kids, are put in the best schools, ones that won't tolerate bullying of any kind. Drake was bullied heavily as a child because of his race and social status. He wants to protect his kids from that kind of hate. Now yeah, the son of Drake is a bit of a controversial subject, but that's only in the eyes of the media, not Drake himself. Drake will very likely be a good father and would use his own life as a looking glass of sorts to make sure that he treats his own kid right and providing for their every need. Number two, the Toronto Raptors. You to make some noise for the number one team in the East, the greatest team in the land. Okay, no, Drake doesn't actually own the Toronto Raptors. However, he does have a certain special position with the team. He owns the title of Global Ambassador, a literal first of its kind for the NBA. Now, unlike Jay-Z, Drake doesn't own any stake in the team despite his official affiliation with them. However, he does play a role for them. They often do things like Drake Night at the show and hand out t-shirts for fans. And one time, Drake even went and gave away a pair of his Air Jordans, which someone then sold for $100,000. Because who needs shoes when you can just have money? Moving on, as noted, this is a very rare kind of partnership for the NBA, but it's honestly because of Drake not just being from Toronto, but him building up Toronto as much as he can. He loves giving back to his own community and helping people who are struggling. He's very much a philanthropist, and that has helped him get a lot of the goodwill in the community. The Raptors saw this and gave him the Global Ambassador title. Technically, his role is unidentified, but more than likely, he's a visual mascot of sorts to bring more attention to the team. Plus, he gets really great seats at all the games and all the kinds of perks you could ever imagine. So not only is he building up himself in this case, but he's also building building up his own brand, which in the music industry is everything. Plus, the NBA gets to stay modern by hooking up with one of the biggest musical stars in the world and one in their hometown, which builds up their own brand with their hometown fans. It's very much a win-win situation. While you can't put a price tag on this per se, if you just go by the season ticket seats that he has, and the fact that he sits in the front row and gets advertisements and more plugs for his role, it adds up to a pretty penny. Number one, a fleet of cars. If you were to ask someone what would they buy or what would they spend their money on if they got rich, one of the first things everyone usually says is a nice car. It may seem simple, but everyone wants a brand new car, not a used one, a really nice one, fresh. One that they can drive around and not have to worry about the miles and wear and tear for a long time. For Drake, it's not that he just wanted a nice car, it's that he wanted a lot of nice cars. Very expensive cars, matter of fact. How nice, you might be asking. Well, how about owning a Bugatti Veyron, which cost about $1.5 dollars. Other cars that he owns include a $28,000 Acura TSX, a $200,000 Bentley, a $300,000 Bentley Super Sports, and a $400,000 Rolls-Royce Phantom. But in truth, he likely has a lot more rolling around, which can be seen in many of his music videos. True, just because he shows them doesn't mean that he owns them, but with $100 million at his disposal, it's very reasonable to think that even if he doesn't, he could very soon. Drake loves his cars, and he loves going out to show 
off all the style and the speed of his cars, and there's nothing wrong with that. He has the ability to get them, so why not? Wouldn't you do the same? Thanks for watching. What did you think of these items that Drake owns? Or are you surprised by some of them? Did you think that he'd have even more than this? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time on King Trending. Hey, just a reminder that we're changing up the giveaways. From now on, we're offering the Galaxy Note 9, the one that comes with the exclusive Fortnite skin, the new iPhone X Max, which we'll pre-order for you, and the new Apple Watch Series 4, which we'll also pre-order for you. The winner gets to decide between these three. Make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, drop a like, and comment the hidden message in the video for a chance to win. You got nothing to lose. Go for it.